आर्काइव्स ऑफ प्रसार भारती प्रेजेंट्स द टाइमलेस ट्रेजर ऑफ गोल्डन एरा पे गुलाबदास ब्रोकर्स नेम एंड फेम इज नॉट रेस्ट्रिक्टेड टू गुजराती रीडर्स ही इज वन ऑफ दोस फ्यू गुजराती राइटर्स हु आर वेल नोन आउटसाइड गुजरात एंड दैट टू नॉट ओनली विद इन द कंट्री बट आउटसाइड द कंट्री एज वेल हिज राइटिंग्स हैव बीन ट्रांसलेटेड इनटू वेरियस इंडियन लैंग्वेजेस इंक्लूडिंग हिंदी मराठी तमिल मलयालम कन्नड तेलुगु बंगाली एंड सिंधी हिज वर्क हैव आल्सो क्रॉस बाउंड्रीज ऑफ द कंट्री थ्रू द ट्रांसलेशंस इनटू जर्मन स्विस जर्मन फ्रेंच हंगेरियन रशियन स्पेनिश बिसाइड्स इंग्लिश आई वुड लाइक टू बिगिन एट द वेरी बिगिनिंग दैट इज वेयर एंड व्हेन वर यू बोर्न आई वाज बोर्न in porbandar in saurashtra in 1909 27th september 1909 was my birthday mm-hmm. porbandar is a leading port in the province of saurashtra in gujarat and as you all know it is the birthplace of mahatma gandhi so i had the good fortune to be born in a place where gandhi ji was born during your early childhood what was your family like who were the members of your family and who influenced you the most your our was a trading family mm-hmm. in those days people in saurashtra particularly of my community and of the community of lohana business community mm-hmm. they were traveling abroad for bandar is a sea port and so people went to africa went to aden went to arabia for from the sea but the particular our community people were came down to bombay for business purposes mm-hmm. and my father here and my grandfather before him were members of the bombay stock exchange and they used to stay about 7 8 months in bombay and for their vacation they would be coming out to porbandar in between for some months the whole of our family would move down to bombay and uh, then uh, we would have great pleasure in a city like bombay my particular my own family consisted of when i was a child myself my mother my father an elder sister a sister whom i forgot to call elder because she was only two or three years older to me mm-hmm. but we were just uh, equal to each other in all these things and a brother of mine so we were this small family my father most of the time was in business and was in bombay so the immediate people with whom i lived was my mother and my brother and my sister who both was married she and her husband stayed with her mm-hmm. so this was the family background and my father had an interest he was not very educated mm-hmm. but he had a great interest in literature so he had got a small library of about 300 500 books and his friend called that library rungar vairagya tarangini mm-hmm. though they were not highly educated in the sense of going to schools and colleges they had very great common sense and very great now of the life of culture so this was the atmosphere in which i was born in the kitchen room there was a cupboard in the wall mm-hmm. and that cupboard contained all the great books of those days those were saraswati chandra was there and the translations of kalidas was there sagan lal hari lal pandya was there and all the big people who counted for something in gujarati literature were all there and that is what my father had read and that is what 
I perhaps in her book. Uh, your father also wrote or published something? Yes, he. We were we are joined mm-hmm. in our combination, and he had such a vast interest in these things. And in those days, most of the people were religious minded. Also, all our parents, grandparents, they were all very religious minded. So when he thought of writing, he wrote a book which was an allegorical book. Mm-hmm. Pilgrim's Progress, oh, yes. Bunyan, was very much renowned in those days. When we were students, also we were told about that. So he didn't know that much English to read that book, but he knew about it from the versions that he received. Mm-hmm. So he conceived an idea of writing a book like that. So he wrote a book of about a hundred pages, strong size, hundred pages book, and called it Divya Yatra. Oh. That is the Yatra of the Soul to be lived. And the stages through which during that travel, the story passes. This is there are some things. There is Narka Bandha, and there is Swarga Bandha, and there is the Human Four Bandha. No, all the Bandhas would be there. And he wrote like that. In those days, Wadi Lal Moti Lal Shah, he was a great Jain philosopher. Very much respected in the community of Jain literature, culture, and all that, and he edited a paper called Jain Hitachi or something like that. I forget the name of the paper. So in that paper, this book was serially published, oh. and it was a great honor to be published in a magazine where Wadi Lal Moti Lal Shah, yes, yes. who was renowned all through. The Gujarat and Saurashtra. He published that book, and he wrote a small preface to it also when that book was published. My father died when I was only nine years old, so I have no big conception of him as a man. But I inherited my very great respect for my father from the talk that my mother always gave me. She talked about him and all that. Because of these things, I hold him, hold him in a very high regard. Kulavdas Pai, yes. in many of your writings, the mother figure comes out very strongly. I presume this is partly due to your mother's influence during your early life. Could you tell us something about your mother, her personality, and the influence she had on you? Yes, yes. I would be very happy to do so. Because, as I told you, I have spent my childhood with my mother only. Father would be out in Bombay. Brother had gone to Bombay to study, and then for business. Mm-hmm. And so I was all the time with my mother. One sister had died. One sister had married, and she came late to our family to stay with us. Mm-hmm. So I was always with my mother, and. Mother was a very religious person, so she would always go when the Jain sadhus or sadhus came. She would go every morning to hear the yatras. I would go with her. When there was no school in the afternoon, she would go to the sadhus. I would go with her, mm-hmm. and at night also she would go to the sadhus if they were there in our town during those days, and. I would go with her, and in the night they would talk. With the sadhvi, you talk generally about religion, mm-hmm. but not deeper religion as they would do in the yakyan, but small talk, and then kathas, vartas. So I think I am not a religious person at all. I know that too, but I think there. May not be many people in our literary field who know as much of the Jain story, the katha bhag of Jainism, as I do. That was because of the mother sense. Another thing, whenever there were no sadhus 
in this town mm-hmm. night should be spent at the house mm-hmm. so as i said we were an influential family and my mother had become a widow very early in life so friends other friends of her age women they would come and sit around and talk and i being my mother said i would lie in her lap and listen to the story and that i was a boy but i was not a very unintelligent boy so and i was 9 years old so 9 to 10 11 and so i remember many of the things that talk and in later life when i remember those things the one impression that i made was that these women were very intelligent if they were educated they would get fit and believe and that and manage the affairs of india mm-hmm. as the most prominent of our women did so i have written somewhere to be not educated in a formal sense is not being unintelligent they were very intelligent people and politically they would talk and talk and most of the families and other things that were just out of the common that i have found and learned in her lap there was a dark girl so they were talking about the dark girl very dark so i remember my mother said i will speak it in gujarati yes sir please hmm? uh, કે આ તો જાંબુ વનની કોયલ છે the natural touch the natural wow of the language because we are inclined to follow the words mejani could catch it and so mejani became mejani madia could catch it and remember so madia became mejani but we who are writing about the city life have lost that ethnic language touch but these people were very clever and they could manage my father was dead when my father died my brother was only 16 17 years old so he just joined the business that my father had established because our uncles were there and they were all partners and all that but during all those years with indomitable courage the mother managed the household managed the reputation of the family and she was just very much respected but i also found a paradox in what you said about your mother as well as yourself you said that she was a highly religious person yeah and at the same time you also said that you are not so religious yeah now how is that what put you off from religion no i am not anti religious i am not as much devoted to the religious practices Mm-hmm. as she and other members of my family and of my town were devoted but even now i shall tell you one thing which i don't think we have talked even now whenever i see a sadhu or a sadhvi mm-hmm. going on the road she may be or he may be a jain sadhu a sanyasi any sadhu even if he or she is looking at me or seeing or something like that my hands go up in salutation whether they look at it or not mm-hmm. whoever he is if you remember a poem by mansuklal javeri he says mara haath uncha tha so in like like that my hands always go and one thing more 
because of my imbibing it from the mother and the members of the family. Mm-hmm. I always have a very great respect from people who are devoted to a real religious life. Mm-hmm. But for me, I am more or less a rationalist. I read a lot of literature, a lot of philosophy, a lot of Marxism and all that. And so I don't feel myself to be that much devoted to all those concepts and all those things. Mm-hmm. But I would rather be with a very pious and a very great man devoted to the moral and the other aspects of life than to one who is merely intellectually very up to date. That is nice to me. But I myself, I would not go in for religious practices and all that. At what age you passed matriculation? From Porbandar or was it from some other school? Up to the sixth standard, I studied at Porbandar. Mm -hmm. After the sixth standard, because my brother was here, Mm -hmm. And Bombay had a charm of its own. I'm sure. Studying in Bombay, it would give up rescue. So, my mother was not willing to let me go to Bombay. Mm -hmm. She didn't want to part from me. But uh, somehow or the other I managed. And for the matriculation, I came here to Bombay and joined the Barlani High School. Mm -hmm. My brother has also studied there. That was important, yeah. And that was in the fourth age. Yeah, it is still there. Yeah. Well, that we have to just opposite to VC Station yeah. and Bombay Municipal Corporation. There a funny thing happened when I came to the Bhagavad High School. In Bombay, it was a custom to have your name, your father's name and your surname. Mm-hmm. In Four Bandar, we had only our name and our father's name. Gulab Das and here they required a survey. So my brother had come before me. And he had also studied at the Burda New York School. Mm-hmm. And when this problem of a surname occurs, we are all Banya. We would generally call ourselves Saad. Yeah. And we were brokers, so we would call ourselves Dalal. Either Sa or Dalal. We have no surname like that as the Grameen sir. Yeah. But my brother in those days, English, it was fashionable to have an English sound in Sermon. So, he said his Sermon was broken. So, he was registered as broker. When I came there, this broker was there. So, when they asked me my Sermon, I said broker. Mm-hmm. Uh, in those days, Vijay Marchand, Panana, Engineer, Sachin Sadhguru, Doctor, like that, the English sounding things were there. So this broker came because of the need of a surname in the school in Bombay. And I joined the Berlin High School. Gulab Das Frank, from what recording. you have said, it seems that you were engaged to Suman Ben, yeah. who is sitting by your side right now, while you were still studying at school. Do you remember the day of your engagement? I don't remember the day of my engagement, but I remember that I was studying in the third standard. So I must be about 13. And she was about 11 and a half or 12. Mm-hmm. She is not much smaller than me, she is much younger, but she is about a year and a half younger to uh-huh. me. Gulab Das Pai, I would like to ask you, at what age you graduated and what were your subjects of specialization? How did you fare at your graduate exams? I passed my BA examination in 1929. Mm-hmm. That is at the age of 20. And my special subjects for the BA examination were Gujarati principles and English subsidiary. I didn't take Sanskrit. Though people at that time were taking generally Sanskrit with Gujarati, Mm -hmm. but I chose to take uh, English with Gujarati because I, as I told you last time, I was very, very happy with my teacher of English, Dr. Parker. Mm -hmm. And in Gujarati, 
the great savan the great literature uh, narsingha of divetia was our teacher at the college uh uh-huh. that is how i graduated with this subject uh-huh. and at the end of your graduation what did you do at the end of the graduation yeah. when the examination ended freedom movement of gandhi ji was very much taking place in the whole of india and the whole country was at throb with the call of gandhi ji and so the moment i finished my examination i joined in the main stream of the civil disobedience movement wherein i was involved because by at that time also i was working in it and i was one of the office bearers of the a ward congress committee that is the fort area congress committee mm-hmm. but the moment i finished my examination mm-hmm. i was busy with the national movement so much so that when i got the degree i had not set for the honor score Mm-hmm. only for the past course because at that time i was very busy with the national movement and both of these things could not have gone together and my health was also not so very good that i could t- undertake the burden of both these things simultaneously so the when the convocation time came mm-hmm. i forgot to attend it oh and because we were very busy with the movement of gandhi ji and you can understand the spirit of the day that i forgot absolutely to go to the convocation and then i got my degree by post afterwards mm-hmm. isn't it rather unusual to be drawn to freedom movement in those days deepak bhai unusual things happened mm mm-hmm. sure no body would care whether you were a stock broker or a mill owner or a mazdoor or a peasant in mm-hmm. the fields all were sons and daughters of india and all were in the national movement those who cared to listen to the call of the country and of the great man who made that call on behalf of the country and so all were drawn into it i remember during my student days yusuf merali made a speech to the students acharya kripalani had said if you do not join us at this moment in the history of our country your names will go down as people ultimately responsible for the slavery of india mm-hmm. and some of us did not want to be so responsible so we joined them gulab das bhai you said you were imprisoned for a year and 4 months yeah where were you imprisoned for and under what charge uh, i was you see in 1930 movement was over in 1932 the movement restarted when gandhi ji uh-huh. was coming back from the round table conference yeah. he was arrested as uh-huh. you all know and the movement was started and then we in the bpcc some of them went underground some of them who could lead the movement remained outside as if they were not concerned one of them was uma shankar dikshit mm-hmm. who is uh, today rajiv's man and in the rajiv also very much respected yeah. him so he led the movement and so what we arranged ke we formed a war council mm-hmm. three persons in a war council the president and two secretaries and they would go and break the law This and they would be imprisoned and then these people who were outside they would again nominate somebody else to be the president of the war council so young as i was i was arrested as the president of the fourth war council in oh. the 1932 movement and uh, the charge was forming an illegal assembly because mm-hmm. we made a speech at chopati and then the police came 
and forming an unlawful assembly and addressing the meeting which was not allowed. Mm-hmm. That was the charge. And where were you imprisoned? Eight days or ten days I was put in the Arthur Road jail mm-hmm. here. And then the law of the land then was that if you are a graduate or a taxpayer, you could be put into the B class. Oh. I was both a graduate and a taxpayer. But I was a young man and they wanted to teach the young people a lesson. Mm -hmm. So for 10 days they kept me in the B class and then demoted me to the C class. For 10-15 days I stayed in Arthur Road prison as a brave the editor of Bombay Chronicle, Mm -hmm. a very famous man there. He was with me in the jail in the B class then. And then I was demoted to C class and then removed to Yaroda. And at Yaroda near Pune, yeah. they had built a camp jail which housed about 1200 prisoners. Oh. And I stayed there as a prisoner in Yaroda. But there were some distinguished people there with me also. One of them was Rao Sahib Patwardhan. Yes, I wanted to ask about that. Who uh, were your co-prisoners? Yes, Rao Sahib Patwardhan was there, S.M. Joshi was there. So many, Navin Khandwala was my personal friend, <coughs> he was there with me. So many people were there with me. And how was your prison life? I mean, how did you spend your time in prison? Uh, in the prison, we were sentenced to hard labor, as they call it. Oh. But it was not very hard. And... Uh, they gave the stronger people to grind corn. corn. But the not so strong people like me, mm-hmm. we were given a fiber called munj. Mm-hmm. We had to thresh it and out of that rushes would be made. Achha, you have to beat it against the stone and, and bring out beat the it, corns, beat, it, yeah. beat it and then uh, they would form uh, ropes from that. So, I was given that. But that was done for about five, six hours a day. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we were free. So, we utilized our time in reading, discussing and friendly chats. Mm -hmm. And we had a very happy time because I was interested in literature. Yeah. So, I would get literary books. Mm-hmm. Patwardhan would be interested in politics. So he would get Lasky and all those people. Mm-hmm. Other people would be interested and so we had all branches of knowledge with us. And we were young so we could just devour the things that we read and discuss and discuss. And it was a glorious time so far as that was concerned. Grav, that's why you come from a well-to-do family yeah. and you say you had a glorious time while you were in prison. I wonder how you manage uh, with your prison life coming as you were from that well-to-do family. You see, when you are fired with an ideal, uh, nothing matters. Mm-hmm. Uh, and most of the people who were with me, not most, but many of the people who were with me were coming from such good families. Yeah. Rao Sahib Patwardhan, Achyut Patwardhan, they came from a very big family and so many others. But there you form a community, a community of freedom fighters, of people who care for the country. And uh, there all those young people are there and you read, write, discuss. Most of uh, the political reading of mine was done during those days. Mm -hmm. Those days, today you must have read, Ranadive said something about Gorbachev. Yeah. Today. Yeah. Ah. But those are young leaders of communism, Deshpande and Ranadive. And the atmosphere was full. So we read during the jail movement much of Gandhi and the and Tolstoy and all those people Gandhi loved, 
but we equally read much of Marx and Lenin and all those people who counted for the international movement for freedom and equality. Mm -hmm. And so by the time after a year or so when I came out, I was a very good student of both Marx and Gandhi. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you one thing. During our jail, Mahatma Gandhi was in the main prison and we were in the camp prison, Yeroda prison. So an arrangement was made with the consent of the government of Bombay that every month one man from one representative from the camp prison would go and meet Gandhiji just for an interview of half an hour or so. Mm -hmm. So I was a very young boy but I was a very talkative person and so these people were led to believe that I was an intelligent person as well. Mm -hmm. So once they selected me to go and meet a representative to meet Gandhiji and I went there and we had a very nice talk for more than half an hour. He also belonged to Porbandar, I belonged to Porbandar and mm -hmm. there was an affinity there also. But there I asked him, Bapuji, have you read Marx? Mm -hmm. He said, where is the time, my friend, for me to read Marx? Eh, when I have to read Gita and the Upanishad, how can I find the time to read Marx? But whatever I am doing, if it is just what Marx or Lenin has said, it is all right, otherwise you may reject it, but I have not read them. 